What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you how to check the entire charging circuit on a 2007 Yamaha FZ6. Now, in my opinion, the charging system on the FZ6 is kind of weak. I've had problems with it over the years with checking the stator, the rectifier, checking my battery. I've just had charging issues on the bike and it's not been fun. So I've had to learn this by myself through reading the manual and figuring it out. And today I'm going to walk you through the entire process. So first things first when you're checking your charging system is you have to check that all your fuses are in line and working. After you check your fuses, you got to check the battery. We'll go into more detail on that in a sec, but then it's the stator, which is under this housing here and the wiring leads under the tank. And I'll, I'll show you how to check the resistance on that as well. Then you check your regulator and rectifier, which is under the seat under here. And then you check the wiring basically to make sure if you still had problems after checking your stator and it's all good, your rectifier and it's all good and also your battery's good and you're still having a problem, then you check your wiring and basically you have continuity between all your connection points which basically means that you don't have a short in your circuit somewhere to ground or to the frame or there's a broken wire or something of the sorts. Let's get into it. side cover off and the cap popped on the fuse box you can see this is the labeling for all your fuses you would want to go through here pull them out individually and have a look and see that they're in still in good shape sometimes when a fuse pops it looks a little bit burnt you can also put your multimeter probes into the top of the fuse here and check continuity basically across the two leads from that little silver dot to that other silver dot I'll show you in a clip you see you have resistance that means you have a connection across the fuse to get to your battery, you have to take your side plastics off and the top fuel tank bolts out. I like using a 2x4 to hold up the tank while I'm looking at the battery. With the fuel tank up, you have access to your battery as well as your 30 amp main fuse, which is right here. I believe you have a spare as well attached to it. With your battery exposed, you want to disconnect the negative and then the positive, and then use your multimeter set to 20 volts DC to check for voltage across the battery. You're looking for greater than 12.7 volts. That'll tell you it's charged and that your charging system's working properly. But I guess if you're on this video, you probably have less than that. So really on a battery like this, anything less than 12.7 volts means the battery or the charging system sucks or it's not working right. So. With these batteries, since they're sealed batteries, you can't check the specific gravity of each cell. So you really just have to take it at face value. Otherwise, on a bigger battery, not a sealed type, you'd be able to get in there and check the electrolytic capacity basically of each individual cell of the battery. But we can't do that. So measure it with your multimeter with the leads disconnected. If it's not able to hold a charge or you know it's a good battery and it should be just fine and it's not, you've probably got to move forward and check on your charging system. But this can be a real tricky point because it's hard to tell. If your charging system's bad, your battery will read low. So you got to keep that in mind. So it's good to have a known good battery to be working with and starting from so that you don't have to factor that into the equation of maybe your charging system has now killed your battery or vice versa. So let's keep moving forward. The next thing to check on our list is the stator coils resistance. The stator sits inside here and it's a stationary component to the charging system. But the wires we're wanting to probe are these ones coming out of the top of the housing here. They go up. You can follow them with your fingers up into here, but they end up in this bundle of a bunch of yellow ones going into this black pocket here. I'm gonna throw you on a time lapse and undo this and get to that connector inside right there. You want the bundle that has three yellow wires and you just have to push down on this right here and then pull the connector apart. I know my hands are in the way, but just trust me. And then once you've got it out, it's these three yellow wires. We're gonna probe them across the pairs. Now, this is where a lot of people go wrong because the measurement we have to measure here is 0.22 to 0.34 ohms. And since it's such a low level of resistance, the leads that are attached to your multimeter play a factor in how much resistance you're measuring. So you have to cross our leads with our multimeter set to 200 ohms, basically the lowest setting, and read how many ohms of resistance are in the leads here that are connected. And you can see that if you hold it for long enough, it fluctuates around 0.7 of an ohm. So that means that anything we read on the bike is going to be 0.7 ohms higher than it actually is in the stator circuit. Because we're not only measuring the stator circuit, but we're also measuring the wires attached to the multimeter because the multimeter is a part of the circuit that it's measuring. So now let's get to actual measuring the circuit. 
So now we're set up to measure the resistance of our stator circuit. Basically we're taking the female end of the connector which goes down to the stator and we're going to probe it a pair at a time. You have to measure it three times because there's three separate coils in the stator but basically you put one lead, oh let me turn my multimeter here, same 200 ohm uh, setting and we're basically putting one into the one side and a uh, ground into the other and we're looking at our measurement and it's going to come down it's always coming down so here we're getting 1.1 ohms oh one ohm that basically means if we take away the 0.7 we're then at 0.3 ohms which is within spec that's on this pair the top to the side but if we check over here we want to repeat that measurement and hopefully it's the same you're looking for all three measurements to be the same. If you had one coil that was extremely high, that would mean that the resistance is burnt and that section of the stator is no longer producing electricity for you. So that one's good. Uh, we've checked on the other side here. You kind of got to hold it for a minute for it to come down to its full reading. And now we're going to switch it. Uh, you can kind of stab the prongs in and try not mess things up. But and now for the third circuit, It'll come down, please. Come on. Yeah, there we, uh, almost. There we go. 1.0. So that basically means that all three pairs here going like top to right, top to side, and side to side all measure the same and equally. And that's what we're looking for in our stator. People go wrong here because it'll read 1 ohm and they'll think, oh no, I'm, you know, I'm 0.7 way out of the range. That's bad. But in reality, it's just the leads messing up your measurement. So keep that in mind. Last thing we check is the output voltage out of the regulator and rectifier box. Uh, you just do this off the battery terminal. I have a battery tender here, so I'm gonna check the voltage off this. You should be seeing over 14 volts and you have to rev the bike up to 5,000 RPM. So we're not checking at idle, we're checking when the bike is running at 5,000 RPM, is it seeing 14 volts or greater? Let's turn this on, get the bike on. <laughs> So as you can see, I'm getting about 15 and a half volts and that's good. So if your stator measures correctly and you're still not getting the proper voltage at your battery, then you've got an issue with your rectifier slash regulator, which is all in one unit on these bikes. It's pretty common practice to replace your stator along with your regulator and rectifier because they work together so closely. So it's good practice to replace both at the same time. It's very easy to get to the regulator and rectifier. It's just under the seat here. Uh, it's a little tricky to reach to, but you can see it pretty easily. It's got cooling fins like a CPU because it gets pretty hot. If your regulator's blown, it'll probably be getting over 15 or 16 volts. It'll be extremely high. The regulator, make sure you don't put excessive voltage into your battery so you don't overboil your electrolyte. If you've got blown rectifier, then it's not going to be converting your AC into DC voltage. You're going to see a crazy signal coming out onto your battery, so keep mind of that. If you've checked all these things and everything seems to be in line, now's the time to check your wiring. Basically check continuity on all your ignition and charging system circuits. Check that you have everything connected basically from point A to point B on that wire. Does it make it from A to B? If not, replace the wiring harness, replace the wire, but basically if everything checks out, you've probably got a grounding issue or you've got a short in your system somewhere or a wire's cut. So keep that in mind. That's the last thing you check. I mean, it's an easy thing to check, but in the order of operations from the service manual, that's the last thing you check. The reason I said my opinion on the FZ6 charging system is that it's pretty weak is that I've had problems with this over the year. I'm not sure what, whether my problem has been battery related or stator related. So I've gone through all these diagnostic methods throughout the years trying to figure out what it is. This last season, I finally nailed it down and it's like the battery works well with the stator. I don't know. It all seems happy this year. But generally, this bike isn't great if you do a lot of idling around. Like even on this setup, on this season, my battery and stator has been really happy. But if I go through downtown and idle for 20 minutes and I don't really get it over three, 4,000 RPM, often I'll have to bump start the bike when I get back into traffic. And... That's just been kind of my experience with the bike. Let me know down in the comments if that's been your experience with the bike too. I just find that since it's a 600, you have to rev it up so high or expect to be revved up so high because pretty much if you're doing 30 in first gear or 50 in second gear, you're at 5,000 RPM. So it makes sense why they design it so the charging system hits peak voltage around 5,000 RPM because the bike spends most of its life there. But if you have a commute or you're driving a lot and stop and go traffic under three, 4,000 RPM, you will drain your battery, likely, it's very possible. Especially if you're running a dual headlight mod like I am or heated grips or any other accessories to the bike, putting added draw on the electrical system, that'll really cause you a problem. 
It's made me consider going to another bike, but fortunately my commute's all on the highway, so I don't really have to worry about it that very often. But every now and then, I crawl through downtown and the bike, if I stall it, it might not start. So it kind of sucks. It's kind of a scary situation to be in. So let me know if you guys have had that problem. But as always, I hope this helps you guys. Please smash the like and subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate it if you do. And as always, have a good day.